see that they tell my truth. Please see that they tell my truth.
Jesus has said Psalm 115, 16 says, The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth is You know, he's given us a dominion destiny. It goes back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. He's called us to rule and to reign on the earth. When Jesus was on the earth, he went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Nations around he went the world. Around Literally, extending the rule of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, religion, come on now. Now, religion doesn't offer that to you. You can't get that from religion. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and and joy in the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of adversity and hardship, there is a place of peace and joy. And overcoming. Well, hope continually prolonged does indeed result in disappointment in discouragement and for some people disillusion. you know the rest of that verse Proverbs 13 12 that speaks about hope for making the heart sick says but hope or, or, or desire realized is a tree of life I love the way the message puts it it says but a sudden good break can turn things around come on now i'm here to tell you tonight that in 2015 god wants to give you a sudden good break that will turn things around you know sometimes the smallest step that we take not anticipating that anything really is going to come up of it is the step that was needed in order to totally change our lives. God wants to give you a sudden break. In the scriptures in the Old Testament, we're going to look at a couple places. One of them is Joel chapter 2 verse 25. Very familiar verse of scripture. God says this. Joel 2.25, I will restore to you the years that the locust have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the bomber worm, my great army which I sent among you. God says, I want to restore to you the years that were devoured. Now, anybody here have, have, have any, any one, one time? Any weeks, any months, perhaps some years? God's promises, he says, I want to restore to you those years. One more place in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Listen to this. This is so powerful. Zechariah 9, 11 and 12. Because of the blood of your covenant, this is the Lord speaking, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Prisoners of hope. I will be a prisoner. I want to be a prisoner of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. The message says, And you, because of my blood covenant with you, I'll release your prisoners from their hopeless cells. Come home, hope-filled prisoners. This very day, I'm declaring a double bonus. Everything you lost, everything you lost, returned twice over. 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 Everything you lost, everything you lost, returned twice over. Hallelujah! God is restoration and recovery. He wants us to under 
understand that it is his purpose for our lives to experience restoration. Sometimes we say, well, you don't know what I did. You know, maybe you're here tonight and and you just opened the, the front door and said, devil, come on in. And the enemy came in and he plundered your life and he stole from you because that's what he does. I want to tell you that doesn't matter. If you turn to God and you trust him, he says, I'm still going to restore to you what the enemy has stolen. It doesn't matter what the enemy has done. It doesn't matter if it seems impossible to be restored. He says, I'm going to restore to you, listen to this, the wasted years. Now, come on now. How can God restore wasted years? Can we go back in time? No. You know what Einstein says? He said, in order to be to move ahead of time, you have to travel at the speed of light. But in order to go back in time, you know you have to travel faster than the speed of light. So it's impossible for us to go back in time. But God says, listen, I'm going to restore to you. Now, what I'm saying is this. It's not dependent upon you. It's not dependent upon me. It's dependent and conditioned by his promise, his faithfulness. He says, I will restore to you the wasted years, period. I will give it back to you. Now, some of you here tonight, you need a restoration of joy. Come on now. There's some people that need a restoration of joy. Remember David? Lord, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. God is going to give you a restoration of joy. Maybe you need a restoration of hope, a restoration of faith. You've been beaten down by the enemy to the point that you can't even believe God. Like how am I going to believe? You can't seemingly even muster up enough faith to believe God for even the most small and insignificant miracle. The prophet addressed that in, Zeph in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 12. He said there is a people in his day who said in their heart, listen to this, the Lord will not do good. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 12. The people who said the Lord will not do good. Stop, stop believing in the goodness of the Lord. What does the word say? I would have fainted. I would have fainted. Except that I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. God wants to restore to you, 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 your faith, to you, your faith. Some of you, you need your health restored. You've been dealing with an incurable disease, illness perhaps recurring sickness I want to tell you we were just ministering somewhere not too long ago and there was a woman there and uh, we prayed for this woman she had this crippling um, debilitating condition in her back and, and she for many many years she couldn't walk or when she did walk she had to have like a, a walker or on a good day she'd have a cane and we prayed for her that night, and God instantly healed this woman, and she, she was just ecstatic. She was elated. She began to run around, run around, and she began to praise God and thank God for her healing. And when we had her come up and share her testimony, she said, Listen, I had been in that condition for over 50 years. So we slept the whole night. She's been completely healed. Let us have finite faith. You know, faith that has boundaries. Faith-type faith. You know, faith that has boundaries, faith that, you know, we get to a certain point, like kind of like when when uh, in, in, in the days of Jairus, when his daughter died and, you know, come and heal my daughter, Jesus. And then after she dies, they send after she dies, they send messengers. Hey, Jesus, it's too late. Leave her alone. She's dead. 
finite faith. God can perform up to this mark, to this boundary, but, you know, uh, I, I just don't have faith that God can raise the dead. As long as it's still a pulse, then, you know, I'm going to hang on, I'm going to believe, but when, when it's dead and there looks, there's absolutely no hope, then it's just... God says, no more, church. No more, people. You've got to believe me. You've got to trust me that I am the God who raises the dead. And I am the God that will restore to you. Hallelujah. God is eternal. He's not restricted or confined by anything in the natural. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know that before there was anything known as time, God created something called time. Son to take us back out of time. All the time he was still awake. Come on now, somebody better get a little bit excited. If you want to hear that again, you have to buy the CD, I guess. David had a plan when he was just a youth. He was ordained and anointed that he would be the next king of Israel. Ditched from the pasture to the palace. There was a period of over a decade where he wandered and literally fled as a renegade from King Saul living in caves with a motley crew of men. During that time, I'm sure David said, is it ever going to come to pass? I'm sure David came to the point where he's like, God, have you forgotten about me? If you read the Psalms, you see that clearly. And just when David, you know, let me, let me say this. There are things that happen to us providentially in terms of circumstances and to us, they seem like, it's the worst thing that could happen on the worst day of our life. And yet God says, I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, David was with this king and, and everything was cool and everything was good. And then all of a sudden, the heart of the king turns from David and he sends David away. And David was like, what are we going to do now? I have to go back to Saul. I'm sure he was thinking some of these things. Saul... What are we going to do? We were safe here in, in Philistia for a season. And what ends up happening is David returns to his city, Ziklag. And when he and his mighty men return, they find that the city had been literally burned to the ground. All of his provision, Greetings, all of his possessions had been looted. And service. their wives and their children had been taken hostage. This is a safe Lord. place. He didn't inquire of the Lord, and the Lord spoke to him and gave him a promise. He said, David, you know, go and We create an energy here with the entourage we have here. Literally. To put a bubble of love on you that you will palatably feel. It will press upon you the information that all that we bring perfect and synchronized is because of the love of God for you. This will not be a lengthy channel. What I wish to do instead is give you an intensity of information. Dear ones, we have walked you through the timing of the new energy potential and we've given it as you've needed it every single point along the way 
starting in 2010, describing the 2012 experience and letting you know not to be afraid. In 2012, starting to tell you about the recalibration in 2013 and asking you not to be afraid. As you reached 2014, we also told you there was a holdover from the 2013 energy and some of you were still in recalibration. Energy does not follow calendar years. But we are still going to give you the potentials of the next three years. Where things are going to start to happen quickly. Now there is an energy that is going to be complete within the next three years and that is the energy of your process, dear human being. Three, 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 three more, three more years is what we are saying it's going to take for you to get used to this new energy. You have time for this. This is a critical teaching time for all souls. These changes are profound and you need to see them and cognize them slowly. Learn what they are, bring them to yourself. But within these three years, there is a new paradigm taking place. Quantum astrologist in the room will see this in the chart. For it is profound and it is accurate and true. Let us first examine the coincidence of the numerology. So that you will see perhaps that the numbers show what it is. Over and over we have identified 2014 as being year one. This is the first year, 2014, of the potential of a new humanity. 2013 was a recalibration year. Simply getting used to shift and what may have happened. Getting used to the fact that you indeed passed the marker and that it was real. And you started to feel it. 2013, difficult for some, was a year 